As you've been hearing, it's been a day of dramatic and disturbing events as scenes of apocalyptic devastation are taking over the entire country. It is believed that Thorpe Park, the theme park in Surrey, is the origin of these events. I think what stands out about the Swarm is the Swarm Island as a whole. It's very put together. It, none of it feels like it has been rushed. The throughput's decent. Just compared to other attractions at the park, it's just a complete package. I just feel like it's a good concept with the idea of the aliens like carrying you. I really like the theming. I think it works well. Well, it's a top five coaster uh, for me, so I really like it. And the theming adds to it. With a top speed of 57 miles per hour and a cost of 18 million pounds, this is the Swarm. This is Fort Park Resort's latest coaster as of 2017 and it's the park's most heavily themed ride. The Swarm officially opened to the public back in 2012 and has been a fan favourite coaster for many of the guests and enthusiasts who have visited the park. Join us as we discuss the planning, construction, and marketing for The Swarm. My name's Luke, and welcome to The Swarm Short Documentary. So all the way back in 2010, Fort Park began to plan their new coaster for 2012. Total Fort Park on their website have shared these photos of some of the early planning stages for the swarm. An interesting thing to note is on the overview page, Fort Park have noted that we can see the plans which they have submitted for the new ride and that the only surprise is the ride vehicles. So it will be interesting to see how Alton Towers promotes SW8 when most of the information about the ride is already visible. Now when it came to marketing the coaster, Fort Park had many different ideas for how to promote this attraction. Some of the ideas were to include an army general's rallying call, a fake news report which eventually ended up in the queue line videos, and the final idea was to have people around the park warning the guests that the end of the world is coming. Fort Park ended up going with this with the introduction of the Les Coogan character within the storyline. The Swarm was chosen to be a wing coaster and its manufacturer would be a company called B&M. Fort Park have worked with B&M before when they were creating the Nemesis Inferno coaster at the park. It would be similar to the one located at Gardaland, which is also owned by Merlin Entertainment. The Swarm is meant to be a half animal, half machine, which has invaded the UK. A cool fact I found out by looking through this document was that the Swarm vehicles was actually inspired by the film Alien. So with the details about the ride complete and the storyline made, Fort Park submitted the plans for their swarm, waited for approval and then began construction in July of 2011. I first heard about the swarm when I watched the Park Worldwide vlog in which he visited Thor Park. Um, I remember seeing the TV advert for it and then wondering what that was. I'd heard about it online, I mean at that point in time I was kind of kind of into roller coaster and theme parks but not to the level that I am now so I'd heard about it online and I'd seen some construction of it I don't exactly know when it was definitely before during the construction phases um, because I remember that image of the dummies with their limbs cut off I remember that so it was definitely before that this was a PR stunt 
to try and advertise the swarm by showing the test dummy's arms being ripped off. Now this was done to sell the ride as having many near miss elements. But yeah, it was, it was probably on some sort of forum website or something like South Parks or something like that. So with construction well underway, it was time for Fort Park to start advertising and promoting the Swarm. As mentioned before, a character called Les Coogan was introduced throughout the last few months of the 2011 season, trying to warn the guests in the park that the end of the world is coming. There will be nowhere to hide. They are messing with your minds. People will tell you lies. This is the truth. The truth of LC12.net. Uncover the truth. There were also posters all around the park saying LC12 the end of the world is coming. LC12 was the code name for the swarm, standing for Les Coogan 2012. Fort Park's most recent example of these code names was with Darren Brown's Ghost Train, which was Whitechapel 2016. If you followed a website link that was on these posters, you would end up on a website designed like a newspaper article. The main feature on this website was a countdown clock counting down the days until the 1st of August, when the truth would be revealed. Once the clock finished, the website updated, revealing all of the details about the swarm, including this teaser trailer. Another part of Fort Park's marketing campaign was to upload multiple videos on YouTube showing people going through their normal day-to-day -day life and then suddenly being taken away by the swarm. Yeah, do it together, do it together. Just together, definitely. Oh, yeah. Otherwise it's not fair, is it? It is. Wait, Ali, oh, push her in. <laughs> Ali, push her in. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Wait, no, the, the no, post's got to go. Right, Ali! Oh, Ali. Same time, same time. Oh, give me a sec, give me a sec. To finish off 2011, Fort Park held a fireworks show and at the very end of the display, there was a large fire engine suspended in the air by a crane. Over the speakers around the area for the fireworks, you could hear audio that an attack was about to happen on this fire truck. After a countdown, it exploded into a massive fireball. This fire engine was then moved to the area just outside of the Swarm Island, next to Depth Charge. When Fort Park decided they wanted to build containment for Fright Nights, they had to move the fire truck backstage until the 2017 Fright Night season, where it was relocated to a Walking Dead maze. So with the hype for the new coaster now fully built up, Fort Park could now move their attention to the finishing touches on the Swarm. On the 17th of January 2012, the swarm took flight for the very first time in its first test run. <laughs> 
Fast forward a month and Fort Park invited former Red Arrow pilots to come and be the first test riders on the swarm. Coming through, then uh, you start doing a few rolls. As you came rolling through here, there are a few bars or something. It looks like so you get really close to them, and you, you know you're a bit concerned about whether you're going to hit them. <laughs> it's just quicker. It's faster. It gets you in the stomach. The swarm features many large theming elements all around the ride. One of the swarm's largest and most striking theming element is a real plane which has been ripped apart in two pieces. All of the seats were removed, but you can still find things like toilets and facilities on the plane today. Other theming elements include a turned over truck, an ambulance, and a telephone box. Alongside the opening of the swarm, Fort Park collaborated with a band called You Me At Six to create a new song alongside the new coaster. It was simply called The Swarm. After March planning and construction, the Swarm officially opened to the public on the 5th of March, 2012. Oh man, three words. Um, floaty is definitely one of the words. Floaty, it's very floaty. Smooth. Go on, we'll go with immersive. Why not? We'll go with immersive. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Smooth, relaxing, unique. Three words. Let me think. An awesome ride. But yeah, the, the wing overdrop is probably the striking element of it. It's very, it's a very complete package. The swarm, I'd say. You know, it's got a, a decent ride uh, and a really quite decent theming. It's not the most intense ride at, at the park but I think it's the most complete. Please hold tight, place your head back and brace yourself. You can easily ride it, it's very easy to ride. Um, the wait time for it is usually quite short compared to other rides at the park. Um, just the feeling you get from it is amazing. Um, I think what stands about the Swarm is the theming that Merlin have put into it, just how well the, the whole island it has just works so well with it. So with the ride fully open, and with the end of 2012 fast approaching, guests started to wonder what would be coming to the park in 2013. Perhaps a new family ride, or a flat ride? Well it turns out it was none of those, and in fact it was some new changes that would be coming to the swarm. For the first time ever on a wing coaster, the last two rows were changed backwards, giving the riders a completely brand new experience. 2013 also saw the addition of a brand new billboard which was added into the ride's path which is a great new near miss element. Also within the fire truck, a large fireball would also now appear sometimes when the ride goes past. The addition of the backward seats came in with mixed reviews. Yeah, I, I did ride the swarm backwards. I really enjoyed it. I liked how you didn't know what was coming. So it just added to the ride. Uh, I haven't experienced it. I would have liked to though. I did, and I thought it was rubbish. It took all the force away, took all the near-miss elements away, and it was just quite a disappointment, really. I, I didn't, I expected it to be quite disorientating, but it, it wasn't. It just took all the fun away. Um, I, and to be honest, I don't think there's any real fix for that. I don't think they could have done anything different. And I'm, I'm kind of glad that the, the back two rows are back to normal so that I can sit in the back right and experience, you know, a forceful ride. Um, you couldn't get that when it was backwards. 
The addition of the backwards seats didn't last that long as they have now since been removed from the ride. My name is Luke from Codes Connection and I hope you enjoyed this short documentary.